Why is Saturday dedicated to Our Lady? We know that Friday is the day that reminds us of the death of our Lord, and Sunday recalls His glorious resurrection. The question arises, why is Saturday dedicated to Our Lady? To answer this question, let us turn to Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira, a prophet for our times. I believe that it would be an exaggeration to say that the holy women and the apostles in John lost their faith on Holy Saturday. But it can be said that they did not have faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection is so violent, it is so contrary to the natural order of things, that the human spirit is prone to not imagine it. And although our Lord raised Lazarus, and they therefore had seen this resurrection because of the hardness of their hearts that characterized them, they did not understand that the one who had raised Lazarus to life could also raise his own self from the dead. They did not realize that our Lord would accept the challenge and the blasphemies that were launched at him from the foot of the cross when it was said to him, If you are the Son of God, Come down from the cross and heal yourself. He did much more than descend from the cross and heal himself. He let himself die. And then he resurrected himself. This is more extraordinary. It is more extraordinary to resurrect himself than to resurrect Lazarus. Why? That a living person resurrects a dead person is extraordinary. It is inconceivable. It is impossible in the order of nature. But ultimately, it is a living person who resurrected a dead person. But a dead man who resurrects himself, that he with his own strength comes out of the abyss of death and says to his own soul, Get up, enter your body and become one again. This is a kind of victory within victory, a kind of splendor within splendor that is inconceivable within the human spirit. Our Lady knew that He would rise. The others, although they had a mysterious instinct that the history of our Lord was not over and that the last word was not said, their presence together with Our Lady shows this very well. They had an idea that something was going to continue because otherwise they would have completely dispersed. Although then they had this mysterious instinct to persevere, they were not yet ready to believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel narration of Mary Magdalene's attitude with regard to this is clear. She had not expected Him to resurrect. Our Lady, in her greatest desolation, never lost hope in the divine promise of our Lord Jesus Christ during this period. Only she believed in the resurrection. Only she had the full faith. On the entire face of the earth, she was the only creature with the complete faith, a most perfect faith without a shadow of doubt. Even in the immense sorrow that she suffered for the sin of the day side, she had absolute certainty of this truth. Serenely and calmly, she awaited the hour of the victory that was drawing near, which gave her a great joy amidst her sorrows. Since only she at that time represented faith, we can say that if she had not believed, the world would have ended, because the world cannot exist without faith. From the moment that there will be no more faith in the world, providence will end the world. It is because there was the admirable faith of Our Lady that only she sustained the world and only she gave continuity to the evangelical promises. Because all the promises made in the Gospel, all the promises made in the Old Testament that the Messiah would reign over the whole earth 
and that he would be king of glory and the center of history all of these promises would not have been fulfilled if at a certain moment faith was lost all of this lived in our lady and she was the ark of hope for the future she had in her as in a seed all the greatness that the church would develop over the centuries all the virtues that she would sow all the promises of the old testament and all the achievements of the new testament all of this lived within one soul lived within the soul of our lady the two most sublime occasions in the life of our lady were when she generated the messiah and alone had the salvation of the world and when she herself had the church the mystical body of christ in such a way that we can say that this part of the life of our lady is a particularly beautiful part it is one of the most beautiful parts of her life it is so beautiful that the question can be raised is it not more beautiful than the period in which she was generating our lord jesus christ in a sacred womb which was a true tabernacle one could ask which of the two occasions was the most sublime in the life of our lady when she begot the messiah and she alone had the salvation of the whole world in her or when she herself had the holy roman catholic church and therefore the mystical body of christ i think it would be reckless to decide the question but someone may ask but i do not understand why you should ask such a question because our lord is the head of the church and nothing is more noble than having the real presence of our lord within you comes to mind a phrase from rostan that i received this phrase by rostan or chanticleer says the following it is in the night that it is beautiful to believe in the light to believe in the light at noon has no great merit but to believe in the light at midnight to believe in the light at 2 or 3 in the morning when even midnight is long gone and when you have the impression that the course of things has definitely sunk into darkness that's when it's beautiful to believe in the light in the presence of our lord dead and before the immense physical defeat our lady saw all the natural impossibility of the resurrection now our lady believed in the light in this terrible darkness in this terrible helplessness she had a complete faith you can imagine her watching our lord die every wound was a human reason to take it for granted that he would die when she held that corpse in her hands at the time of the pieta in the face of that immense physical defeat she saw the natural impossibility of the resurrection and she made a very tranquil act of faith and she said all these wounds are unimportant this shattering death has no importance because he will resurrect i believe because he has promised we can say that it is difficult to decide which of the two moments was the most beautiful in her life but in any case it can be said that this was one of the most beautiful moments of her life the church chose saturday to celebrate our lady because it is exactly the day that recalls the tragic hour of doubt and abandonment so it is understandable with what tact the church chose the day to celebrate our lady friday he died saturday he was in the grave full of perfumes and aromas without breath tied in the hebrew fashion with a stone in front a seal stone it was all over except in her soul for a torch of faith and conviction burned in the certainty that he would rise this is holy saturday maria we therefore have a special reason to have devotion to our lady on this day every saturday we honor our lady especially because of this exquisite extraordinary reason that gave rise to this habit 
it fulfills her prophecy in the Magnificat. All generations shall call me blessed. If you like this video, please do leave your comments below and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and see you at the next video. Salve Maria!